The movie opens with an elderly woman named Helga who lives in an old building. She suffers from dementia, which makes it hard for her to remember things. Right now, she is hearing noises from her vent, making her very scared. Helga immediately calls the extermination team and asks them to come over. Shortly after, a man named Frank shows up, and while heading towards the apartment, he notices a strange liquid coming from a vent. Is that White Claw? A bad smell is also coming from it, but he doesn't pay much attention. After Helga lets him inside, she explains that she's been hearing noises from the vent and requests that he investigate. Frank mentions that some of his colleagues arrived here earlier and they still haven't returned. However, the old woman doesn't remember anything and is clueless about what he's talking about. After this, Frank begins searching for insects in the apartment. He soon finds blood on the vent and wonders how it got there. Then, in a shocking turn of events, he finds a dead body, which turns out to be a colleague from his company. Frank panics and attempts to flee, but he is abruptly dragged into the vent. Seeing all this, Helga is horrified, but she soon forgets everything again due to her condition. She then hears the noises from the vent and decides to call the exterminators again. If she keeps trying, she will eventually get Ace Ventura and all will be well. The scene then shifts to four days earlier when we see a meteorite fall from the sky. A lump of fire enters an apartment through a window and gives birth to a spider-like creature. This is the apartment of a woman named Gunther, who is the building's manager and Helga's sister. Later, Helga's 12-year-old granddaughter Charlotte uses the air vent to see secretly enter Gunther's apartment. She is actually there to steal some dolls, but she comes across the spider while doing so. Charlotte is a bit curious by nature, so she places the insect in a matchbox and takes it along with her. After passing through the vent, she notices her stepdad Ethan talking with Gunther in the hallway. The old woman is furious and complains about how Charlotte broke one of her windows and stole her collectible dolls. She threatens Ethan, demanding that he must repair the damage or learn to control his daughter. In the next scene, Charlotte goes to her room where she puts puts the spider into a jar. Moments later, Ethan arrives and scolds her for breaking into Gunther's room, but the girl denies it. From their conversation, we find out that the two don't have a good relationship. Although Ethan cares about her, Charlotte doesn't see him as her father, or respect him. You're a bitch, daddy. He then warns her not to do such silly things again, and leaves. Later, we are introduced to Charlotte's mother, Heather, who is spending time with her infant baby. This little boy, named Liam, was recently born to her and Ethan. Heather then decides to go check on her sick mother, so she asks asks Charlotte to look after Liam. After she departs, Charlotte obliges to the duty for a while, but she soon gets bored and heads to her room. There, she traps a cockroach and offers it to the spider to eat. To her shock, the creature engulfs the cockroach, which is twice its size in one go. Impressed by the spider's ability, she finally decides to name it Sting. Her and Sting are gonna make a mukbang channel and get rich. In the meantime, we find that Ethan is a comic artist who is struggling with his career and with providing for his family. So, he has been helping with maintenance work at the building. Currently, Ethan is repairing the pipes in an apartment one floor below when a cockroach unexpectedly falls on his face. <coughs> This clearly disgusts him, but he still completes his work and meets the apartment's owner, a Spanish woman named Maria. Elsewhere, Charlotte is trapping more cockroaches and feeding them to Sting, but despite eating constantly, it does not appear to be full. It keeps growing and getting bigger the more Charlotte feeds it. In the evening, Ethan is working on his comic book, and Charlotte also tries to help him. They start brainstorming new ideas together, and Heather is thrilled to see them bonding. Later that night, Ethan walks into Charlotte's room in her absence. He looks at the jar with Sting and feels strange because he has never seen such an unusual spider. At that moment, Charlotte returns, and she tries to distract him from the spider. It is evident that she has started liking the creature and does not want to be separated from it. Ethan then tucks her into bed and says he loves her, but the girl does not respond. After she falls asleep, Sting escapes from its jar and starts exploring through the vent. It eventually reaches Gunther's apartment and startles her pet parrot. Wah! That's a big fucking spider! The following morning, we see Charlotte's family carrying on with their usual activities. All all of a sudden, they hear Gunther screaming, and when they rush to check, they find her pet parrot dead in a very brutal condition. Everyone assumes it's the work of a rat and immediately calls an exterminator. Frank arrives shortly after, but upon inspecting the parrot's condition, he doubts it could be the work of a rat. Despite a thorough examination of the vent, he finds nothing conclusive. Frank simply sprays some insecticide to get rid of whatever may be hidden. Meanwhile, Charlotte is in her room spending time with Sting. It appears the insect returned to the room quietly after committing the murder. Suddenly, 
a cat mews nearby, and Sting mimics the sound. This shocks Charlotte as she has never heard a spider mimic voices before. She then continues to feed it with cockroaches, and Sting happily devours them all. But just then, a mothball shows up there, which terrifies the creature. Charlotte realizes that Sting is afraid of the mothball and seems to be hurt by it. Not long after, Frank arrives in the room and requests to spray insecticide there. However, Charlotte refuses, as it could hurt her pet. Frank's eyes then fall on Sting, and he tries to convince her that keeping such creatures as pets could be dangerous. Despite this, the little girl is unconvinced and demands that he leave. At midnight, Sting once again escapes from its jar and begins crawling through the vent. It eventually reaches Maria's apartment and startles her small dog. We then see Maria taking sleeping pills and preparing for bed. She picks up a picture frame of her family from the wall and stares at it. It is revealed that she lost her entire family in a car accident many years ago. While she is reminiscing about her loved ones, Sting suddenly appears and bites her face. This causes Maria to fall and hit her head on the floor. She then gets up and tries to check her wound in the mirror, but falls again and realizes that she's paralyzed. At this moment, Sting reappears and enters her mouth. Moments later, it comes out of her body by ripping through her stomach, eventually taking her life. Now that's what I call a good Saturday. The next day, Charlotte goes to meet one of her neighbors named Eric, who lives downstairs. He is a biology student and keeps experimenting with stuff in his apartment. Charlotte shows him the spider, which has suddenly increased in size since last night. She mentions that it can mimic sounds, much like a talking parrot. This piques Eric's interest, and he now wants to learn more about the creature. He says that he will find the ideal environment for Sting and build a tank to help it grow. Charlotte also innocently trusts him and leaves her pet with him. Elsewhere, Maria's terrified dog makes its way to Ethan's apartment through the vent. When the latter finds it, he assumes the poor animal escaped and decides to return it to its owner. But when he reaches Maria's apartment, he is horrified to find her dead body. He immediately contacts the police and urges them to conduct an investigation. Meanwhile, the building residents start freaking out, as just recently, a parrot was killed and now Maria is dead in a similar manner. As the cops leave, Eric calls Ethan to his place and tells him everything about Sting and the dangers of keeping it at the apartment. He further speculates that the creature could be the killer and that they must hand it over to the Department of Health and Safety. Seeing its massive size, Ethan is freaked out, so he leaves the responsibility to Eric. This one's on you, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. Afterward, when Charlotte finds out about this, she becomes furious and refuses to believe that her beloved pet could harm anyone. She argues with Ethan, insisting that he is not her father, and he has no right to make rules. In a fit of rage, she also states that she wishes she could live with her real father, who supposedly resides in Thailand. However, Ethan unintentionally reveals that her real father lives in the same town, but he is not interested in seeing her. Hearing this, Charlotte begins to cry, as she had always hoped to be reunited with her father. Heather is now angry at her husband for disclosing this truth to their daughter. In the meantime, we see that Eric hasn't handed the creature over. Instead, he has kept it with him and created an environment that would be perfect for its growth. He wants to boost the creature's power, so he can use it for his own benefit. As Eric continues to feed the spider, it grows larger and larger. At one point, it becomes so massive that the tank cannot contain it any longer. Elsewhere, Ethan receives a call from his publisher, informing him that they will no longer publish his work because it's progressing too slowly. To make matters worse, Gunther also appears and dismisses him from his part-time job. She claims that he cannot take care of the building properly, and because of him, Maria is now dead. Afterward, Gunther tries to find her cat, which she hasn't seen in days. She hears meowing sounds from the vent. So, she uses her flashlight and decides to enter without care. Moments later, her flashlight stops working, and she is brutally attacked by Sting out of nowhere. Meanwhile, Ethan becomes so frustrated with his life that he breaks things around the house, going full limp biscuit on it. Heather tries to stop him, but he starts arguing with her as well. Sensing the tense situation, Charlotte takes baby Liam and retreats to her room. She puts on headphones and starts watching videos to distract herself. While the parents continue arguing, Sting appears out of nowhere and attacks them both, paralyzing them. It then drags them and takes them to the vent. Charlotte has no idea about this until she takes off her headphones and hears Maria's dog barking profusely. She rushes to investigate, but Sting suddenly appears and drags the dog away. After this, Charlotte notices blood around her apartment and her parents missing. She begins to panic and finally realizes that it must be Sting's work. But before she can come up with a plan to stop it, Sting arrives and takes Liam as well. Witnessing this, Charlotte breaks 
into tears and starts blaming herself for everything, as she damn well should. But in her moment of desperation, she suddenly recalls how Sting was afraid of mothballs, which seemed to hurt it. Charlotte then comes up with an idea and begins mixing mothballs into water to make a solution. She fills a gun with the solution and gets ready to confront the spider. Later, Charlotte arrives at Eric's apartment and finds him tied to the ceiling with a cobweb. She then goes to check on Helga and finds her surprisingly unharmed. This is because the old woman always keeps mothballs in her pockets, repelling the creature away from her. Charlotte then gives her grandma the contact number of the exterminators and asks her to call them. After this, she fills more bottles with mothballs and also pours the solution on herself. When she enters the vent, she soon hears Ethan screaming and finds him covered in cobwebs. Charlotte pours the solution on him, which melts the webs and eventually frees him. But just as they prepare to leave, they both fall into the basement of the building. Sting then shows up out of nowhere and prepares to attack Charlotte, who is lying on the ground, injured. But Ethan quickly sprays mothball water on it, causing the creature to retreat momentarily. Who's that, mothballs? <laughs> The situation worsens when they realize they are trapped in the basement and lack the keys to get out. Charlotte panics, claiming it is her fault, but Ethan assures her that they will work it out together. At this moment, Helga hears the strange noises and calls for an exterminator. Frank soon arrives for inspection, but as shown in the opening scene, Sting sucks him into a vent. Frank then falls into the same basement where Ethan and Charlotte are present. In a state of panic, he bangs on the basement door, but no one can hear him. He blames Charlotte for the entire situation and even attempts to attack Ethan. However, Charlotte intervenes and claims that they can solve the problem with mothball water. Moments later, Sting again shows up. So, Frank takes his nail gun and shoots at it. This hurts the creature and Frank becomes happy at the sight. However, his actions also cause the water pipe to burst and the mothball's effect begins to wear off. Taking advantage of this situation, Sting returns to the scene and brutally decapitates Frank. Feeling helpless, Charlotte and Ethan decide to hide in the garbage compact. Actor. To their surprise, they find Heather and Liam there, trapped in cobwebs. They use the last mothball water to free them, and the family is finally reunited. At this moment, Charlotte realizes how much she loves her family, and that she always wants to stay close to them. Sometimes it just takes a mutant space spider to make you realize these things. But their joyful reunion is cut short when they notice Sting approaching. As a last resort, Ethan plans to trap it in the garbage compactor and crush it to death. But unfortunately, even after pressing the button multiple times, the low does not fall as expected. Having no other options, Ethan decides to risk his life and reconnect the plug himself. He gets electrocuted in the process, but his plan succeeds and the button finally works. Charlotte then presses it and the load comes crashing down on the creature, eventually killing it. As the family is saved, Ethan collapses to the ground. Heather attempts to revive him using CPR, but he remains unresponsive. Seeing this, Charlotte feels emotional and desperately prays for her father to be alive. She then begins counting from one to three and miraculously, even though that was a very short span of numbers, Ethan regains consciousness. Charlotte then rushes to hug him and calls him dad for the first time. She repeatedly says that she loves him, and Ethan is deeply moved by her words. In the final scene, the family gathers around and hugs each other tightly, grateful to have narrowly escaped death. Just then, we see several spider eggs in the basement container, waiting to hatch. It means that the danger is not over yet, and the havoc caused by Sting was only the beginning.